So I'm curious, maybe we start off with a warm-up question. Get your perspective on the revolution around Gen AI, and then uh, maybe how that uh, revolution intersects with cybersecurity. Well, Pete, uh, first of all, thanks for, <clears throat> for doing this with me. Um, I'm struck by the similarities between this year uh, and sort of 1996, 1997. Because back then, um, the internet had been around just as AI has been around. But all of a sudden, the internet became a big deal and everybody was adopting it. And you had to adopt it or you wouldn't achieve productivity. Uh, boards were demanding uh, of their leadership uh, in corporations, get onto the internet, sell on the internet, have a good internet uh, web-facing page. And everybody ran into it as fast as they could without thinking about security. Security by design had never been uttered. Uh, now, the result was huge increases in productivity. Right. But also, the creation of the cybersecurity industry because <laughs> there was a massive problem of cybersecurity that people hadn't built in. Same thing with AI. AI's been around forever, but now, this year, in the last 12 to 15 months, LLMs have like blossomed, and every company is being told, you have to have an LLM, you have to use it, you, it's gonna increase our productivity enormously, we'll be left in the dirt if you don't do it, which is all true, by the way. But most companies are sort of getting into it without thinking about security. The parallels are, are really shocking. And I think there's a lot of talk about AI and security, but it gets very muddled. And so for me, when somebody says, tell me about AI uh, and security risk, I say, which of the following three things are we gonna talk about? Is it the security of your AI? You wanna use AI on your enterprise network and you're worried about the security of that and the risks that come from that and there are considerable risks, uh, considerable benefits too, but let's be real, there are risks. So that's the security of AI. Then it's the security from AI because malicious actors are already using AI. We can talk about this in more detail. But malicious actors are already using AI uh, to come after your network. Uh, and there are specific risks there as well. And then someday, maybe, uh, we will have our sores operated by and our socks operated by AI. That would be security by AI. So what do you want to talk about? You want to talk about security of AI, security from AI, or security by AI. And under each one of those three headings, there's a lot we can talk about. Well, let's, let's dig into the from piece um, because you're known and have had a reputation for seeing threats several steps ahead of everybody else, maybe several leaps. That was true with Al Qaeda. That was true with the cyber threats. Uh, uh, let's talk a little bit about nation state sponsored AI threats. How do you see those today? How do you see those evolving? Um, I, I, you know, people are starting to talk about them, but uh, it'd be really great to get your perspective on where you think that is and where it's going. I think this has been going on for a couple of years. Uh, and the difference is there's no one running around with a sign saying Russian AI attack, Chinese AI attack. That would make it a lot easier. It would make it a lot easier. But a lot of the things we're seeing are Russian AI attacks and Chinese AI attacks. And, and what do they look like? Um, they're finding zero days a lot faster. Uh, AI can, can create a zero day uh, much faster and with fewer resources uh, than it would take a bunch of people in, in Moscow. Uh, so we know that's happening. We also know that they are using AI against our, our standard security go-tos, our ERMs. Uh, and they're looking for where the trip wires are on the alarms. What can I do to get around well-known ERM? 
test, 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 test. Oh, they caught that one. Uh, and they're finding ways to get in, and they're getting in, uh, around what we consider to be the best products in the business. Because they're using AI to test uh, how to do that. They, in several cases, they buy the products, uh, and then they run the tests against them. Uh, which is frightening because you want to secure your network, you buy the best in breed uh, ERM or, or identity manager or whatever it is, uh, and they can still get around it. Uh, so we're seeing all of that, and just on the basic level, we're seeing spear phishing that is much better. Spear phishing is increasing in volume, uh, and the quality is really good. Uh, and we're going to see, and they're only experimenting with this so far, we're going to see deep fakes. Deep fakes, uh, audio and video, uh, to get money transferred, to get access, to work help desks, uh, because help desks are increasingly the target. Uh, what if your help desk you know, sees a video of you uh, on the corporate Zoom or, or hears your voice? Uh, it's going to be a lot easier for them to assist. So nation states are already using it. The one that bothers me the most that we have not yet seen uh, is using AI to conduct large numbers of simultaneous attacks on infrastructure. You know, if you think about uh, swarming of drones, which is the new attack technique that we have seen both Ukraine and Russia use, swarming of drones, overwhelming defenses, well, think about the AI attack on infrastructure. That is that. That is a swarming attack that no nation state, no matter how many people you have working in your cyber command, no nation state could do uh, if it were being done manually. But have AI see if all of your penetrations are still live, see we, where you have accesses, see where you have preloaded uh, attack software. And by the way, the Chinese have begun, this is a new thing, the Chinese have begun not just having accesses to our infrastructure, but preloading uh, destructive malware. So like that, their AI-driven uh, attacks could take down a whole series of infrastructures in a matter of minutes. So, so the vast majority of the critical infrastructure is in the hands of private companies. Yep. And, and look, what is critical infrastructure day is very different than what it used to be even a decade ago. So when you think about, you know, as a CISO, as a board member, what, what should enterprise be doing uh, to plan for this new kind of threat vector? And, you know, let's think about it. You're talking about nation states today, but some of those very capabilities might be in the hands of uh, some of these ransomware as a service uh, providers in the future, right? Mm -hmm. So how do companies prepare for this uh, this, uh, this new threat landscape? It's a question I get a lot in, in my consulting practice. Uh, companies are coming to me saying, you know, is this different from uh, cybersecurity and, and can you help us with it because you helped us with cybersecurity? And yeah, it's different, but the similarities are significant. And we can use our, the same approaches that we used for cybersecurity to think about corporate AI security and AI security risk. Let's begin with a risk register. Let's begin with an AI security risk register that's bespoke for, the, for your company. Let's figure out what risks you would have, you have now, everybody has some now, and as you increase your use of AI, uh, what are those risks and how do they increase? And what for each of those risks is your blocking strategy, is your detection strategy, is your remediation strategy. So it, it's, it's simple things that we did for cyber, you know, beginning 20 years ago. What's your corporate governance plan for AI? Who's in charge? Does the CISO or somebody have the authority to say no? I know you love saying no to people in your, your company. Um, also, yes, but yes. yeah, you, you want the authority to say no. What's the governance plan? Um, what's the accepted use uh, policy? How have you communicated that accepted use policy uh, in an understandable way on a regular basis to the workforce? 
what's the risk profile? Uh, what have you done to the risk register? Do you have an AI security risk register? And then, how are you enforcing all of that? Uh, <clears throat> I've got a consulting firm, so I can't help you enforce. But we've partnered with um, Calypso AI. And if you don't know Calypso AI, take a look. Uh, they're not one of the new startups in the business. Uh, they've been around for six years. Their first customers were three letter agencies in the US government, uh, which is a good place to start. And now they're working with us and with enterprises. So that you can take those accepted use policies, you can take those risk uh, measures and run detection uh, that enables you to use AI with confidence because you know people are, are not allowed and not gonna be able to use it in a way that's not permitted. And if someone is using AI against you, that's gonna be detected. Pretty interesting, pretty interesting. Uh, great perspective. I wanna shift gears just a little bit uh, because AI isn't just about the cyber arms race. There is also uh, a race for economic supremacy around Gen AI. Mm -hmm. And I know that uh, as a uh, technology expert, you've been kind of observing and, and watching and monitoring and advising on that. So when you think about the US, how far do you think the US is ahead of, uh, say, some of the other economic powers in, in terms of generative AI? And um, you know, how does the US maybe maintain supremacy? I heard somebody the other day say, the US is ahead of China by six months. Bullshit. I mean, how, how can anybody know with that level of, of precision? Uh, I think what, what the answer is, is there are two players in this game. This is a two player game right now. Yeah, the Europeans are doing some things, Israel's doing some things. Uh, but basically it's the United States AI ecosystem against the Chinese AI ecosystem. And they're both pretty good. And some have strengths in one area, one has strengths in the other area. Uh, I think we had an independent judge last month give us a verdict about who's ahead right now and who's likely to be ahead in the future. Uh, and that independent judge uh, was the United Arab Emirates. Um, I consult with them, I've consulted with them for years, and they created an AI company uh, called G42 several years ago. They created a cabinet minister for AI several years ago. Interesting idea. Uh, and G42, by the way, do you know why it's called, G is for group. You know why 42? I don't. Anybody? Hitchhiker's Guide, yes. Hitchhiker's Guide, yeah. What's 42? The answer to everything. The answer to, to, to why are we here, 42. Anyway, <clears throat> what's the question? The answer is 42. Um, so Group 42, funded with billions of dollars, uh, hired some of the best AI experts in the world uh, and created Falcon uh, LLM, which is on par with ChatGPT. Um, it helps if you're writing in Arabic, but anyway. Um, they were doing contracts with American <coughs> organizations. They were doing contracts with Chinese organizations. Uh, and they thought, you know, we're going to have to pick a side here. We're not going to be able to continue to do the in-depth uh, cooperation we want to do uh, with both of them. And the United States government was saying to them, too, that you've got to pick a side. And I was out there last month, and I spoke to the people who made the decision, and they said this wasn't even a close call. They chose the United States. Um, the United States has a better ecosystem. And it's not, you know, one, they signed a deal with Microsoft, but it's not just a Microsoft orientation. It's <clears throat> the American ecosystem, access to chips, uh, access to, the, to all, all of you, the startup markets, um, the venture capital money, the private equity money, uh, all of which is going to be necessary. Because to really use AI at scale, uh, we're going to have to have enormous investments. Enormous investments in data centers, enormous investments in the electricity grid. Uh, the ecosystem is a lot bigger than we think it is. 
So if the very smart guys and gals uh, in Abu Dhabi looked at the two horses in the race right now and picked the United States, I think that's a good bet. And as Joe Biden says, never bet against the United States. <laughs> But wait, there's more. <laughs> uh, okay, so I know it's hard to predict the future, but if you were to look forward ahead in five years on the uh, AI, the Gen AI ecosystem, what would, you, what would you predict? I think you'll see, if you believe the productivity statistics in general, and you know they're, they're imprecise, but they do measure something, uh, I think you'll see uh, productivity in the United States do a complete hockey stick. I think it's going to go up like that. Um, do I think that will cause massive unemployment? No. No. Uh, you know, I think Microsoft's got the right term when it says co-pilot. Um, and it's interesting, the United States Air Force has also got this idea of co-pilots, so that every fighter plane now is going to, in the next generation, have two AI fighter planes along with it but the man or the woman will be in the, in the middle controlling them. Uh, I'm not afraid of massive unemployment with AI. Uh, but I think we're going to have a period, if we can be otherwise stable in this country, and that's a big challenge, uh, if we can be otherwise stable in this country, I think we're going to have a period of incredible economic growth. That's a great prediction. Uh, let me bring it back home uh, to... Uh, the cybersecurity cybersecurity community. Let's think a little bit about um, CISOs and global threat actors today. Uh, if you had to give, uh, and you do this pretty regularly, you've given me advice. Uh, at what what would you tell today's CISO uh, about how to get ready for the uh, uh, AI threats today and lean into the threats of tomorrow? You know, the word that always comes back uh, is resilience. You are not going to be able to anticipate every method of attack. Uh, in, the, in the book, The Fifth Domain, we talked about, you, we used to say there are two kinds of companies, those that were attacked and knew it, and those that were attacked and didn't know it. But in The Fifth Domain, we turned that around, Rob Kanaki and I, uh, and said, there are actually two kinds of companies, those that have been attacked and hurt, uh, and those that either haven't been successfully attacked or if they were, they were resilient and not really hurt. Uh, and they don't like to run around saying their names, and I won't uh, say their names, because when you think about the list of companies you know who have been attacked, we can all tick them off, uh, all the big hacks. Now think about the list of companies that are out there Particularly think about the ones in finance, banking, uh, maybe some in defense, that you've never heard about being hacked. It's possible. It's possible to have a system that's so resilient that when they do get in, it's contained. It's detected immediately, it's contained, and you're back up shortly. Nobody gets mad at you if you're hacked. They get mad at you if you botch the recovery. And those famous companies, famous for being hacked, last month Change Healthcare, uh, are famous because they botched it. And I think that's what people now need to focus on. Work with AI experts, work with security experts, Identify what your AI security risks are. Get that risk profile. Try to figure out how to block each one of those. But more importantly, try to figure out how you can be resilient if that risk materializes. Emphasis on resilience, not on excellence and purity and 100% defense. Really, really good advice. Uh, I have one more final question for you. And uh, I just thought about it a few seconds ago based on something you said. As a board member, you sit on boards, you hear CISOs present. What are the types of things that you're listening for 
uh, when it comes to AI, AI strategy, AI security, uh, that would give you comfort as an expert and a board member? If a CISO comes to me and is overnight an AI expert, <laughs> and a lot of them have tried that, um, they don't get very far. Um, I worry. Uh, we, we can all, as IT security people, learn how to be AI security people. If we work at it, if we spend the time, if we uh, make the effort. But when the CISO is suddenly overnight uh, an AI expert, um, I have a problem. And so the question I always ask is, who have you brought in? Who are the experts you're relying on? Uh, and what's their background? What's their track record? Uh, and until I get a satisfactory answer on that, I keep pressing. Good advice. Good advice. And with that, we'll close it. Uh, please join me in thanking Richard Clark for spending some time with us tonight. Thank you.